So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call our meeting to order. I'm going to turn on my microphone and call our meeting to order. Um, it is February 6, 2018. This is a regular meeting of the North Kingston School Committee. Um, and if I could ask everyone to please rise for the public meeting. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll?
So I just thought to put a little consideration to that for the school calendar. Um, and my other comment is kind of as a citizen, I hear people that move to our town, and they move to our town from other states, and they go on Google, whatever, and they see that Wickford Middle School is like one of the top ranked middle schools. So that they choose to live in North Kingstown because of the quality of education that children will get. And I was looking at the budget cuts. First off, I hope we get more than what we asked for because I do understand you're under a restraint just by losing the state funding. But I noticed that there was a lot of dollars cut from the middle school grades when you divide it out. When you add up the cuts and divide it by the grade levels, like I know the elementary lost a lot, but they have you know, six grade levels. The middle school has three grade levels. High school did four grade levels. And I found the middle school was really getting hit hard, hit like twice as hard as the elementary schools. And it's looking like a lot of the specialist programs are being taken away from the middle schools. And at that middle school age group, those extracurricular things where they're supposed to experiment and try all the new things before they go to high school, where they have to choose what they like, they'll be choosing what they like without having tried anything. Um, I'm hoping we get some more money and get it back and we can put back some of the cuts you had. I hope the town doesn't take away any more from you. And when you do get the money back, the town's going to be wonderfully generous. I hope you put a little bit more back in the middle schools. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Next is Joseph Baker. Good evening, Dr. Oje and members of the school committee. My name is Joe Baker. I live at 209 Edmond Drive in North Kingstown. I would like to start by clarifying my remarks from the past school committee meeting, to which I have not had the opportunity to respond to publicly. I believe in transparency and appreciate that the school committee does as well. But transparency becomes opaque when the facts are buried within a 400-page document with a variety of pictures of Wickford Harbor. The facilities of all school operated buildings are important and we should strive for the best. However, the reality is that the administration has very nice facilities. While there are classrooms without windows in many of the town's schools, and these optics are indefensible. I've also brought a copy of my spoken testimony from the past meeting, since the online video of the meeting does not include my testimony, but I'm aware that you're trying to recover. Now that those things have been said, I look forward to hearing about the latest revisions of the FY19 budget. I would like to request that in the spirit of transparency, the proposed budget documents be made available online so that we can see them as well. It's recognized that the budget remains in constant revision, but since we all agree that transparency is important, I'm sure a weekly update would be sufficient. I would also like to report that following the suggestions of this committee, I have reached out to the members of the town council to engage them with regards to making improvements to Quinnesset Elementary. While most members of the town council and the town manager have offered to assist as much as possible, their capacity is limited. So I again request the school committee and superintendent to make sure that Quinnesset Elementary is staffed to deal with the numerous ongoing issues. I certainly comprehend and recognize the limitations on funding increases and 4% caps and implore you to make the tough decisions and ensure that the right priorities are dealt with as part of this budget. The budget proposed at the last meeting unfortunately reduced the overall staff at Quinnesset. Even with the addition of one behavioral TA, it came at the price of removing one full-time TA and two part-time TAs. The children at Quinnesset Elementary need you to make the right decisions. They don't get a say in this no matter how transparent the process might be. As their parents, we are here to speak for them, but the ultimate decision rests on your shoulders. Please don't let the behavioral issues, constant disruptions, or bullying continue. Please do the right thing and provide the school, its students, and its amazing staff with what they need to be safe and to succeed. Thank you. My name is Jeremiah Diehouse. Uh, I reside at 48 Ashton Avenue uh, here in North Kingstown. 
Uh, I'm a proud parent of uh, two North Kingstown School District children. Uh, full disclosure, uh, one of them is a kindergartner at Hamilton Elementary. So uh, I'm just here to say very briefly uh, to the committee, uh, beyond thanks for the service that you provide the town, uh, I really encourage you to think carefully about uh, early childhood education, particularly the younger grades, as you're considering the budget cuts that are before you and that were uh, proposed in connection with this meeting. Uh, we know that uh, what happens in the early grades uh, can have ramifications later in students' careers. Um, and uh, while no one wants to sacrifice the opportunities of older kids for those of younger kids, uh, I'll just go ahead and uh, repeat some of the sentiments offered by the previous speaker to say, um, you know, there are really important things going on at Quid, uh, also at Hamilton, uh, and uh, I appreciate that you're trying to spare the elementary schools and early, uh, earlier students, uh, but I really encourage you to, uh, to think very carefully about cuts you have to make, uh, particularly at the elementary level. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak or didn't sign up? Yes, sir. Um, my name is Jake Mather. Um, I'm a father of uh, a second grader at Hamilton Elementary School. I'm the PTO president at Hamilton Elementary School, and I'm an incoming kindergartner. Could you just state your address, sir? Oh, sorry, 135 West Allenton Road. Thank you. Here in town. Um, and I just wanted to stress my, the way I feel about the arts um, and in reading about possible cuts to the arts programs um, in the uh, middle school, and it really it is potentially devastating. The arts, especially in middle school, in the younger years, are when kids start to understand and realize, you know, perhaps what they're interested in. That's certainly what, I'm a local landscape architect as well, and went to RISD. It's always, it was always my dream since middle school to go to Rhode Island School of Design, but I never would have had the ability, to, I, I never would have even known about that if it wasn't for the arts program in my middle school. Now granted, my middle school was in Vermont um, and not here, but cutting the arts programs for younger kids can be uh, hugely devastating and, you know, for architects and photographers and engineers and fine artists. Um, I just wanted to stress that and also whenever possible, wherever possible, to keep the class sizes small enough so that kids can get more one-on-one -on -one with their teachers and with their instructors. Anyways, as much as that. Thank you. Thank you. I see someone else approaching so Hi, my name is Kate Scott. I live at 10 Jasmine Circle in Saunders Town. And I have a first grader currently at Hamilton with a kindergartner. God, how old is that kid? Uh, probably two years from now. And I would like to follow Jake's thought along with the arts. I have a child, a first grader, who loves art, and that's how he gets his feelings out right now. He is not able to say a lot. I'm angry or frustrated. He does a lot of that through his art. And it breaks my heart to think that those programs are going to be cut for him. And I just met these lovely parents from Quidnesset, and one of the great points they had was spend some time in the schools. I know nothing about Quidnesset, to be honest. But just talking to them for 10 minutes, not even 10 seconds, mm -hmm. if cuts are going to be made that deeply to that school, spend some time in it. I know some of you are parents in other schools. We don't really know what goes on there as parents until you spend a day. Half an hour in the principal's office? Sure, I can do that. But that's not going to tell me what it's like in my first grader's classroom. So I just ask before you make such deep cuts, really think about what does it mean on a daily basis and go into those classrooms, meet those kids, meet those TAs and those teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else uh, who'd like to speak this evening? Okay. So next uh, item on our agenda are routine items. Uh, first, I'd ask for a motion to seal our executive session minutes of February 16, 2018. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It passes. And um, were any votes taken in our executive session? No. 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 So I can disclose that no uh, votes were taken in our executive session this evening. Next, uh, we have our consent agenda. Uh, 
any members have any items that they would like to exempt? Um, before we get that far, um, I'm going to exempt items E, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Any others? E, 2. Any others? If I could have a motion to approve the non-exempted uh, sorry, consent agenda items. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes unanimously. So the exempted items, uh, first is item E2, Mr. Jones, you exempted that. Yes, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve E2. Okay. Motion to approve E2. Second. I have a second. Yeah, discussion. I, I, we can't deny it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, but I think, you know, sometimes we fail to do this, but when we have these, um, and whether it's our administrators or our um, staff, faculty, um, to, to take a moment and, and acknowledge uh, people who have given, um, in this case, many years to the district. Um, a lot of um, time, obviously, and sweat tears probably too and uh, just to take a moment to thank those people and wish them fair winds and follow the seats. Yes, so um, the, uh, what Mr. Jones is referring to is uh, the retirement uh, today is announced for uh, Mrs. Danette of Goodness at Elementary School. Uh, Mrs. Danette has, um, you know, let, uh, let me know that she had intended to retire uh, at the end of this year early on um, and she waited until uh, this month to make this announcement because that sets us up uh, for a new search uh, at an optimal time in the March and April time frame. So uh, I cannot thank her enough. She's been at Quidnesset through many different versions of Quidnesset. It was a 4 5 school and, and previous to that um, for almost 20 years. And uh, she is a tremendous professional. Um, she's a great administrator and a great leader, and we will certainly miss her. But we'll do more. To honor her near the end of the year, but um, just want to give that recognition tonight. This is on the agenda. Thank you. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving item E2? Oh wait, I don't remember which, yeah, I have a motion. Sorry, I lost it. Uh, all those in favor of E2? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, next is item E3. I think we'll take these all separately. It's just easier that way. If I could have a motion to approve item E3. So moved. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of E3? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Next is item E4. If I could have a motion to approve item E4. Second. second. A motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Next we have item E5. If I could have a motion to approve E5. So moved. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And if you could mark, I'm going to abstain from that. Next we have item B6. If I could have a motion to approve B6. So I have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And if you could also have a motion to abstain from that vote. And it passes. Next we have approval of the 2018-19 school calendar. Motion for what well, first? You have a motion for discussion purposes. A motion to approve the 2018-2019 school calendar. I have a motion. <coughs> a second. And a second. Uh, Dr. Jane, Thank you. Yes, this is for next year's calendar. We, we normally do the approval right around this point. And uh, if you recall, earlier in the fall, we we uh, entered kind of into an agreement with other South County um, school departments to. Um, have some features in common with them. So we're with Narragansett on this. Uh, South Kingstown, we are not, but Narragansett, Exeter, West Branch, Charo, 
Wesley have all agreed, me and James now, have agreed that um, we would start for the students after Labor Day, that we would um, have a four-day weekend, long weekend, uh, on the President's Day weekend. So Friday would be out as Monday, and that is for teachers and students alike. Um, and that we would take our second semester break in April uh, on this calendar. So those are some of the features. And those are items, by the way, that um, are pretty much uniform with the surveys that we had done earlier, about three or four years ago, when we entered into the calendar that had the, the one week vacation uh, instead of two in the second semester. Um, and at that time on the survey, it was indicated that uh, the preference was to start after Labor Day. Um, I'm going to ask Dr. Humber to talk to the concern that Mrs. Pickering had. So being that this coming school year, we have um, election days, we have the primary day, and we have the regular election day on November 6th. Uh, usually in the past, we've been front-loading two days in order to do uh, an orientation day with our convocation, um, and the next day have the technology summit. Um, because the, of the way this falls, uh, we, we decided after conferring with uh, a few key people, and I, I believe the membership was asked informally, um, the teacher membership, uh, that we would instead uh, separate out, instead of front-loading two PD days at the beginning of the school year, that we would do the orientation day with the convocation um, on the 31st in August, and then on September 12th, being that that was so close to the school, the beginning of the school year, it's right like a week after Labor Day, that we would do our technology summit on the 12th. Um, and then um, we still have two PD days left. We would do the next one on November 6th, and the fourth one on November, um, March, excuse me, 13th. <coughs>
art teacher in the district. Um, in the past couple of years, we've pretty much retained the amount of art that we've had all along. The only difference being at the high school, we reduced by a couple of sections of art, meaning specific classes, not teachers. And that was only because art is an elective, and fewer students were elected to take that particular course. So it kind of uh, plays in the same playground, if you will, as all of the other electives at the high school. Some years more run, when there's more student interest, and some years there's less. But there was no, never um, a proposal from me to cut art in our school department. In fact, it was kind of interesting that the day um, after that email that I was aware of it, there was an arts conference, uh, arts and education conference here at North Kingston High School led by our own art teachers um, with the commissioner coming here and um, a lot of recognition for the North Kingston School Department for the tremendous art programs that we do have. Not only, you know, um, visual arts, but um, our musical is second to none. Our music program is second to none. Um, there's so many wonderful things going on here. My, my own kids were a big part of that and I would hate to part of using that anyway. So I just want that to, to be said. Um, and um, one more point about the office facilities. The office facilities, and this was made last time that we are currently in, uh, comes at a significant savings to um, the situation that we have. Um, the town moved into our old office building and spent what they have spent to make that serviceable is about 15 years of us being in the current office building that we're in. So we, uh, at that time that we made that move, that school committee said, this building is inoperable. We do not want to put any more money into this clunker of a building. We need to vacate. And we found a very good deal um, that helped us preserve other programming around the district. That was the whole point. The fact that it's newer, um, does not make it luxurious, it just makes it new, and it does look more professional, but that was not a hard bar to overcome considering what the other building looked like. So I just want that to be out there as well. Thank you. Anyone else? Have any I have a question, Greg. Yeah. Is um, the budget sessions that we have, are they open to the public? Yeah, the, the next two that I just talked about? Yeah, they're school meetings. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. They're public right. meetings just like this one. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Um, and then I just want to, uh, if everyone else is spoken, um, the town recently had a, um, a budget meeting about a week and a half ago where uh, they talked about their preliminary process in establishing uh, how much uh, various town departments, including the school department, are going to be funded by the town. Um, you know, we've always talked about that. You know, the, the numbers that we've been working on are bringing our budget in line with a, a request of 4% uh, more in funds than we had received from the town last year. But as, as people clearly understand just from hearing uh, comments uh, on the microphone, that does not mean that the town council will give us that. Um, it, what the town requested the uh, what the town council requested the town manager do uh, was produce a budget with a two percent increase uh, to various uh, departments, including the school department. Uh, that's you know significantly that would be a two percent reduction above and beyond what we are doing right now, um, which would. Uh, dip even more deeply into uh, various programs if that's the way it came out. That's not what they're approving, that's just what they asked the town manager to come up with. Um, it was mentioned uh, by one of the counselors um, that they would like to see a 2% cut to every single department across the board, including the school department. Um, so, you know, just so that you folks know uh, what the discussions are on the town council side, um, uh, those are the things that were brought up at those meetings. So we don't know what's going to happen when our actual budget number comes down. Uh, but, you know, this is certainly, uh, even as we approve the budget that we're talking about, you know, now it's our preliminary budget and it's subject to, you know, review, reduction, or increase um, once we know what our actual funding number is going to be. Um, you know, and as far as what it would mean if we were ever looking at uh, going deeper or whether we were ever faced with a 2% cut, um, I mean, as far as what that would mean, I, I can't even say. It would just be, you know, we'd not be able to offer those types of programs that we do now. Can you give an idea of what a 1% reduction would be? Well, I mean, if we went to $3. Like dollars. Well, a 1% is? Every 1% is half a million dollars. So if we were to cut from the 4% that we have presented to you down to only a 2%, 
And what that means is that means over last year's town allocation of property tax. It doesn't mean the entire budget. It doesn't mean all the revenue. It just means in the contribution from town property taxes. So if we were to take the budget that we presented to you at 4% and brought it down to only 2% over prior year, we would need to cut an additional million dollars approximately from the cuts that Dr. Ajay presented to you at the last meeting. And then my second question, with the state funding, is there any way to appeal it by get in touch with approval? We have, and the answer, and we've done it on various fronts, officially, unofficially, and even a little bit of really unofficially, just people who know people who know people. The answer we've always received is the funding formula is a formula. The answer is the answer. If you want to change the funding formula, the General Assembly needs to change the funding formula. And they haven't, and it's not as resonating as I would have used. It's just a formula. Yeah, Dr. Jay? Also, I want to make more clarification for the audience. There was a comment made about transparency and where can we see the budget. The preliminary, my preliminary budget proposal, my PowerPoint presentation to the council from December, and the list of cuts that I have proposed are all listed on the front page of our district website. If you scroll down below the pictures, you will see a group of items that are kind of drifting across the page, and all of those items are listed there. And if anyone should have any questions in looking at those documents, please feel free to call our offices. We'd be more than happy to help you and answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any other further discussion? Mr. Gibbs, may I? I just want to clarify the point. I know we have it listed here as budget cuts. The budget currently as submitted by the superintendent for review is a 4% increase. With that in mind, when you talk about cuts, it's because the superintendent, in doing his assessment of what the district need, came up with a number that currently we could not afford. So while we are, I guess, the superintendent has proposed reductions to his initial estimate, it is still a 4% increase. And while I agree 400 pages is a lot to go through, the first couple pages, like page 7, if you go to the current FY18 budget, sort of lays out that 80% of the district budget is salary and benefits. Most of those are collectively bargained. So there's not a lot of wiggle room unless the collective bargaining agreement is changed. And so sometimes when we ask where the money is, you have to make cuts or make reductions. You have to look at where the money is. The other part, which is not obviously people don't see a lot, close to 9% is out-of-district tuitions. Now, it's a little bit of a dual-edged sword because we get some tuitions from other districts for our CT programs, but we have some students who take advantage of that from other districts or technical stuff, or in some cases the appropriate education for them is not in the district. Those are not cheap in some cases, and those are not obviously something we can discretionarily cut. And additionally, $1.2 million goes to charter schools. That's 3% of the students, $1.2 million. That is your cost of choice. Thank you. And then just one more thing, sort of following up on what Mr. Jones has said, with respect to the budget document itself. And unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of ways to simplify our budget. We have a lot of money going in and out for all the schools in the district, all the various categories. We are required by the Rhode Island Department of Education to use a set of uniform charts of accounts that specify the very specific rules as to which lines on our budget correspond to which types of expenses. And the reason that Rhode Island implemented that program a number of years ago was to allow the North Kingstown school budget to be compared to, say, the Cranston school budget. And we know that we're all budgeting the same expenses in the same area, so that you'd be able to look at, for example, an athletic expense in Cranston to see how much the athletic expense is in North Kingstown. 
Um, it makes for a cumbersome budget document. I don't disagree. Um, and some of the, I wouldn't even call it extraneous, but some of the extra information that's in that document is an attempt to clarify and simplify um, the document for um, members of the public or anyone who wants to dive into it. So for example, if you look at our preliminary budget, there's a very nice breakdown. Some of the pages are a breakdown by school. So you can look at you know, each school in the district, what uh, the number of, uh, you know, and it has a lot of, you know, frankly, very useful information with free and reduced lunch populations are, what our test scores look like, um, so you see what you're getting out of that school, um, as well as the number of teachers, the history of staffing levels, and then the various, you know, budget lines, and that's sort of, that's pulling out of a larger document that the, the, the actual budget is, is huge, um, and uh, that's what we're forced to work with because that's the way we have to work with it. Um, I wish there were an easier way to do it, um, fortunately there isn't. Tasks that we on uh, this members of the school committee have is to sort of drill down and into that budget and uh, work with the administration and our answers questions, our questions answered um, and uh, figure out you know what we can move, change, and, and, and do to fit um, into what we have. And it's not a simple process. And uh, you know, when we talk about reductions to something that was done last year um, that might not happen next year, uh, I am the last person. Anyone who's talked to me outside or knows me will tell you I'm the last person who wants to see anything not happen next year in the North Case of School Park. Uh, but we can say it over and over again. We can't spend money we don't have, and we're forced to, to work with what we've got. Um, and, and that's our path for the next couple of weeks, and then continuing on into the spring. Any other comments on the budget? I was going to say it for the end, but I might as well. Sure. <laughs> Um, so I think it was a uh, comment on and so this comment that um, there was a reference made to a 400 page document or something like that. Um, the, the budget that is published on our website is actually only 142 pages and if you're really looking to get down into the nitty gritty, you can probably whittle that down to maybe 60 pages of actual accounts and data um, that's really pertinent. Um, and so if, um, if anyone wants to, um, to to actually go through that, um, you can either give me a call or send me emails, and I would be happy to go through that line for line um, with you to help you understand where those expenses are going and um, and and how you know how those expenditures work. But I want to say that probably 80% is going to salary and 9% is going to out of state tuition. There's probably another I don't know five or six percent that is going to regulatory required things. It leaves very, very, very little for these, I don't really want to say discretionary because that makes them seem menial, but they're definitely not menial, but for these other things for us to consider. Um, so I just, I hope that everyone's mindful of the um, incredible amount of work that goes into the project and um, I would like to thank Mary King and, and her staff for the um, tremendous amount of work and detail that goes into this budget. Um, and for her um, answering all of my relentless questions this week. Um, she always has every answer to every single question that I ask. And I, this is what I do for a living. I look through, um, through budgets and financial statements and, and balance sheets. So I'm very comfortable with looking at a budget and trying to um, determine where we can make cuts and where we can't. And I'm telling you, this is as lean as it can get. And to hear that we may be facing cuts from the town is literally, it makes me feel sick to my stomach. So I hope that we don't. But um, I just hope that everyone is mindful, really, of how um, intricate this process is with so many different moving parts and um, just recognize the amount of work that goes into that. Thank you. And with respect, one last thing, um, to reaching out to members of the town council. Um, I know the answer that's always given by members of the town council, and they're 100% correct, is uh, if you reach out to members of the town council with respect to a school issue, you're going to hear that they have no control over what happens in the school park. And that is 100% correct, except that the budget decision that they make in a few weeks has everything to do with the decisions that are made by the <laughs> understand the reason that they answer the way they do, and I uh, just would say to anyone who's reaching out to the council to, to say just what I said, which is we understand that you don't have control over how the money is spent. However, you do have control over how much money there is. 
And so the conversation needs to be for them to understand that uh, if you support education in this town and you want to see the North Kingstown School Department remain the award-winning uh, extracurricular um, you know, uh, laden, uh, full student experience, life building district that we have. Uh, and that was very inarticulate, so I hope it doesn't get quoted directly. <laughs> That wasn't my best uh, phrase. Um, we need to continue to fund it, and we are doing what we can to be fiscally responsible. The budget that we are looking to present has major reductions in employees throughout our district. We are doing what we can to save money where we can do it, and we are making decisions that are extremely difficult. And I hope that that's understood by the council. And I hope that it's in their minds as they go through their own budget process because it's extremely important um, that we all you know, have a full understanding of what we need to do. So. I have one last clarification. There was a comment tonight about the, uh, the video from the last meeting being done. I apologize for that. That was a technical error the first 10 minutes. Uh, we didn't think it was um, broadcasting. We reset it. Um, and then uh, everything else came up on the stream. It turns out that that was preserved um, and it was clipped to the uh, rest of the stream. So the, the full meeting of our last uh, school committee meeting with all citizens' comments is up on our website and has been for several days. So just want everyone to be aware of that. Thanks. So if anyone thought there was a grand conspiracy, we apologize there is not. <laughs> Mistakes can be made. Okay, uh, I think we've reached tonight's discussion of the budget, and we have a lot more to do. Uh, anything on CIP, Disney Bond, or Future Bond? Mr. Jones. Uh, yeah, again, in the spirit of saying, um, if you're interested, it's out there. Um, I think we have 400 pages of the meritorious budget, and the difference of that is, um, it also goes into detail of some history of town and school appropriations and the levy, and, and so it has a lot more um, historical stuff in, in great detail. Um, I know there's discussions in different places, and it's a thing from the governor and everything about, you know, all of Rhode Island schools are falling apart and everything, um, and legions of people have just been running around not paying attention to get to that place. I would say if you go look at um, pages 64 through 118 of our FY18 budget, um, and we have a facility subcommittee, which um, we have representation on, people who do a lot of diligent work, uh, it outlines in great detail all the capital needs of, of our district by priority, by building, by location, you know, you name every which way you can probably classify stuff. Um, it is there. And then on 119 and 120, it talks about the items we have been able to address, um, given that in most years we've been given no money for capital. So it's been fixed through either finding savings in other places and done that. Um, but the suggestion that problems aren't being identified, aren't being tracked, aren't aware of, aren't been studied. Um, you know, we have a long-term infrastructure plan um, about becoming newer and fewer and, and hopefully posturing the district uh, for many years to come, so maybe to minimize in the future. Um, but ultimately, you still have to pay to replace them. Um, so I just want to make it clear, maybe some people suggest that the school department isn't paying attention or prioritizing or listing. Um, there's 50 pages of all that. But again, you still have to have the money to, to uh, make those efforts. Thank you. Uh, next item is uh, the second reading of the policy. And actually I ask to, for a motion to table this item for a future meeting. We're going to make Vision and bring it back. Um, so if I can have a motion to table item D1. So moved. A minor revision, nothing crazy. Um, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, we have reached the end of our 